Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Alex Morskurin and I'm the co-founder and head of consulting at Hudson Thames. And this is the first lecture of our series of lectures on financial machine learning, which is called financial data structures. So in this lecture, we'll discuss various data structures which are used in algorithmic trading strategies research, including time bars, tick volume and dollar bars, imbalance or round bars. We'll also discuss how to deal with perpetual, non-perpetual assets such as futures and options using futures role and how to deal with multi-product series um, using ETF trick. So ETF trick is extremely applicable and useful if you trade statistical arbitrage strategies on multi-asset data sets. So let's briefly discuss what are the inf pieces of information which are available to us if we try to research a new trading strategy. So firstly, we have available fundamental data. Fundamental data refers to various uh, financial reports released by uh, companies or market reports, or um, I don't know, macroeconomic reports or GDP estimates. The second type of data, data sets which are available to us are so-called market data, which basically refers to all the trades uh, which uh, occurred during trading session on the exchange. So, and the basic piece of information for market data is so-called trade data. So if you hear trade data, tick data, or time and sales data, this actually refers to the same piece of information. And it contains the information regarding the orders which have been executed on the exchange. And it contains usually four fields. So the first one is order timestamp, which basically refers to a time when order occurred on the exchange. The second field is price which means price under which uh, the order occurred on the exchange, volume, the size of the uh, order, and aggressor flag. Aggressor flag means uh, the message from the exchange, which tells us if the trade was initiated versus bid or ask. If you take a look at uh, this picture, you can see the most widespread way to visualize trade data. So here you can see time, last, which is actually price, size, the size of the tick, and the aggressor side. But if we take a look at, for example, Apple stock, we can see that during the day, there are like millions or even tens of millions of trades, uh, and we need to somehow analyze them. So analyze, analyzing raw tick data can be sometimes very time consuming, and uh, you need uh, quite um, uh, serious uh, PCs in order to process this data. So we need to somehow compress the data into a special data structure. So if you Google Apple stock on, on Yahoo Finance or TradingView, you can, see, you can see a special data structure, which is called bar. So some traders say we use daily bars, 10 minute bars or, or 20 minute bars. So what it means actually. So bar is a data structure which has four fields. So the first one is open price. The second one is close price. The third one is high price. And the fourth one is, is low. Sometimes volume is the fifth field which uh, is used to describe the bar. So sometimes bars are also called OHLCV. O for open, H for high, L for low, C for close, and uh, uh, V for volume. So how, we do, how do we compress bars? So let's take, for example, daily bars. So we can get a daily bar by taking all trades which occurred during that day and to compress it into daily bars. So if we sum up all the sizes of trades during that day, we can get the volume of daily bar. We take the first price under which the bar uh, occurred during that day. The close price is the price of the latest of the latest uh, trade. High price is the highest price during that day and low is the lowest price of that day. We can also need to understand if, if the bar was during, during ups or downs. So here you can see the green bar, which basically means that the price of the, of the security went up. So how can we understand that? As this bar is green, 
we, we do understand that, that the open of this bar will be lower than close. And we can also hear, see here high and low. If the bar is red, we can see that the open price is higher than the close price and the and high and low stays the same. So this type of bars is called time bars. So this is the typical chart which we can see on trading view with various um, green and red bars, uh, which we can now analyze and build various technical indicators on top of that. So the most, the most widespread time bars resolutions are minute bars, like one minute, five minute, 10 minute, 30 minute bars, one hour bars, daily bars, which are most widely used to represent the price of the security. Uh, if you want to analyze long-term uh, long dynamics, you, would like, you, you can compress bars into weekly or monthly uh, data structures. But what are the disadvantages of this type of bars? So on the right hand on the right hand side, you can see the distribution of volume for nearest Dix futures contract. As you can as you can see here, this, this distribution is not uniform, meaning that at 14, 15, and 16, we have much higher volumes traded comparing to 13 and 17. So this curve is quite dynamic. And that's why if we, tr if we compress our bars on a time basis, they do, not rep they do not take that into account. So because we compress them using only chronological order. So trading activity is not equally distributed over time. And time bars do not take that into account. As a result, they don't take into account volume activity. And if, for example, we have quite um, uh, quite high volumes and the trading activity speeds up, as a result, the volatility may increase. And that's why time bars quite often suffer from volatility clustering and heteroscedacity, which we try to avoid in our um, statistical analysis. And as a final result of that, the, return distrib the returns distribution of time bars is far from normal, right? So how can we solve this type of issue? So first of all, we can use so-called standard bars, which are divided into three big categories. So the first one is tick, second one is volume, and the third one are dollar bars. So actually the idea of different time clock was first identified in Mandelbrot and Taylor paper in 1967. And multiple studies have confirmed that sampling as a function of trading activity results in return which are closer to independent and uh, identically distrib dist distributed, which is called IID. And it is extremely important for us because many statistical tools actually rely on the assumption of um, that observation are drawn from IID and especially Gaussian process. But if we take a look at uh, time bars and the distribution of returns on time bars, we can see on the right hand side here that this, di this distribution is quite far from normal. So here, if you take a look at the normal distribution and the distribution of time bars, we can see that uh, the, um, these uh, time bars are quite high from normal. And this assumption of Gaussian distribution is not true for, for time bars. So how we, how we can solve that? So I have, as we have previously discussed, we'd like to take into account trading activity and to sample bars more frequently when we have more trades uh, which occur uh, right now and to sample more frequently as a result of higher trading activity. And this is actually the idea of tick bars. So tick bar is formed when a specific number of trades occur. So for example, a tick bar of size 100 would sample a bar when 100 trades pass and based on that, we will create and compress a new bar. So there are actually several advantages and disadvantages of this approach. So first of all, this is the first step to take into the account trading activity because more trades, more market activity, 
more bars are formed. As we can see from the uh, plot on the previous slide, the returns distributions of tick bars, this is the blue line, is much closer to normal distribution comparing to time bars. So now we are much closer to the Gaussian distribution, which is quite needed in our statistical uh, analysis procedures. But there are also several disadvantages of these bars. So first of all, tick bars are quite susceptible to outliers, especially auctions. For example, let's take a look at a big limit order, um, which is sent to the exchange. As a result of that, uh, this one big limit order will, like in the most of the cases, uh, it will be split into several small or orders by the exchange and tick bars do not take that into, into account. The second thing is the trade side does not affect bar generation because there, are, there is quite big difference between a trade on one contract and 100 contracts, meaning that sometimes usually the retail trader would trade with one contract and if someone comes to a market with a pro with with a contract size of 100 or 1000 this basic that would mostly mean that a big player came to the market or informed trader but unfortunately tick bars do not that do not take that into account and as we have uh, previously discussed tick bars do not take into the account order fragmentation so limit order for 10 stocks can be lifted with four separate market orders. So how we can solve this type of issue? We can solve it by using volume bars. So volume bar is formed when a specific number of volume was, was traded, meaning that instead of trying to count number of trades, we generate bar when a specific number of contracts was traded. So for example, we generate bar when 1,000 of um, stock units or futures contract was traded and uh, compressed into OHL CV bar. So what are the advantages of that approach? So firstly, we overcome the problem of tick bars by sampling every time a fixed number of units uh, are traded. The returns are also quite close to returns distribution, but let's take a look at several disadvantages of this approach. So first of all, many market participants trade based on dollar volume rather than volume. So imagine that you are a high net worth individual who would like to invest his $1 million into Amazon stock. So instead of trying to think in terms of number of units, you try to invest a dollar amount meaning that you multiply the price of the stock by the volume. So in this case, we need to, to track not only volume, but also the price of the security. Let's take a look, for example, Amazon stock, as we have previously discussed. So Amazon stocks is traded in thousands of dollars. On the other hand, some small cap stock is traded in cents or uh, dollars. But it can be still be quite liquid. And that's why the most of the traders on, uh, uh, on the market would uh, think not in number of stocks, but rather in dollar amount which they can invest in a security. And volume bars does not take in that into the account. If prices increase sharply, then volumes will drop. And if prices drop significantly, then we will see an increase in volumes traded. So this uh, directionally implies from the first uh, from the first disadvantage. Let's take, for example, um, a situation when the price of security dropped by 50%. If it is still liquid, market participants will still trade the stock, but they will need to trade it with number uh, with a bigger number of units still preserving the, their dollar allocation to this company. So that's why we can use dollar bars when a specific dollar amount was traded. So here I refer to dollar bars as dollar volume as size of the tick multiplied by the price of the tick. 
So if you take for uh, if you take a look at the picture on this slide, you can see the dollar bars and volume bars frequency uh, at which they are uh, sampled, uh, starting from 2006 to 2018 for S and P 500 futures. And as you can see here, um, dollar bars need uh, uh, dollar bars are rather stable comparing to tick bars and volume bars because they track the dollar amount instead of volume amount and they are much more adaptive to the price changes of a security so let's uh, let's sum up key takeaways from this part we can compress our bars based on time based on number of ticks which were traded volume traded or dollar traded. Using tick volume and dollar bars yields much better statistical properties comparing to time bars. If you would like, if the price of the security is quite uh, time varying and, and volatile, you should rather use dollar volume instead of volume or tick volume to be more adaptive, adaptive to price changes in that security.